What's up guys? Today is another cool video. I got a really cool surprise I got it for Christmas. And it's at the shop this time, not at home. So we have the Christmas tree at the shop. And if you look under, there's something really cool waiting for me right here. This really cool, another set of Doritos. So we have a 13B. This time, instead of being a RX-7 13B, this one says RX-8 13B. So I'm pretty sure you guys know where I'm headed with this. Allow me to explain the concept of what I'm working on. Basically, I made a chart. So you can see we have RX-7 13B. This is the S5 out of my car. And then we have RX-8 Genesis engine. The RX-7 S5 engine has bigger apex heels. So it has two millimeter apex heels are also longer, so they last a little bit longer than RX-8, obviously. The four port housings, which are the turbo S5 housings, that are the good ones to bridge port. And then it has stronger iron. The back iron of my engine is a beefier one, like Vargas explained. So it holds a lot of power without cracking the housings. Then the RX-8 Renesis engine has higher compression rotors, so they're able to produce better response. They have added oil holes on the main bearings, so it has better lubrication. And then the counterweights that come in the automatic version of this engine are the counterweights that you will be using when you have an aftermarket flywheel on the 13B engine. Well, with the combination of these two engines, we have the Ultimate 13B. I'm gonna be using the RX-6 rotors machined to use the two millimeter apex seals from uh, S5 Turbo 13B. And then I'm gonna install the counterweights, the eccentric shaft, and stationary gears from the RX-8 into the S5 13B. I need to loosen the front pulley bolt on this engine. And I think I found a way to possibly hold it together. So I chained the engine to the lift post. Then I'm using this really long breaker bar and all of my strength to try to get it up. Johan told me he already undid the nut on the flywheel, so that's good, and he just put the flywheel back on so I could like lock the engine. But let's see if this actually works, or do I break the breaker bar? Let's give this thing a shot. Right, one did not work. If at any point... Oh, let's try this again now with a little bit bigger pipe. Hopefully that's enough leverage to break loose that crank pulley bolt. Make sure you're spraying the Well, guys, that definitely worked. I literally just lean on it, it's like it came right off. And my breaker bar did not break. Sweet. Even though it's a hardware freight breaker bar, that was very cheap and still works. All right, crank pull is loose. So I can take this off by hand now. I went ahead and took the flywheel off, the back nut. It's also loose, so I'll take that off in a little bit. I just drained the oil from this thing. Now I can remove the oil pan. I gotta remove the this pulley, remove the front cover. And then after I do that, then I can start taking everything apart. So I can start taking off the layers of this thing. After an intense battle with this thing, I finally got it off. I was trying to hammer it, but I ended up just since I don't care about this housing, I just put a chisel over here and then ended up just making it part. It literally flew all the way over there. But it's intact, so let's put it aside. And then we're moving on. 
Uh, actually, an update, I, I, I talked to Mike and he said to not use this. He said we're not gonna be using these stationary gears because the ring four stationary gears are only found on the six port Renesis 13B engine, but since this one's a four port, then it just has the regular stationary gears, which are not to be upgraded on my engine. When you remove the front crank bolt, you will find that there's a seal on the bolt. So make sure to not mess that bolt up. And then there's gonna be this little thing in here with two sets of springs. So make sure to keep those in order and don't lose them. Now I can try to just wiggle this thing off and it comes right off, sweet. Now we have the front housing exposed, but in order to take that off, we need to remove the oil pan first. Since the oil pan is held onto all the plates, it's gonna keep it from being able to take it apart. I can't believe this thing has a plastic oil pickup tube. Why would they put a plastic oil pickup tube? What the hell? What is this? No wonder these things blow up all the time. All right, now I'm gonna take apart this front cover. I already went ahead and loosened all these bolts so it would have been a lot easier to film. I don't see me just breaking loose all these other bolts. And that one doesn't wanna come up. No! It almost feels like that oil pan thing is lava. Like, I don't want anything falling there. Oh, there's gonna be water now. Oh, wait, there's one more. Oh, there's a little bit. Never mind. Alright, how many bowls do I have left? Is that it? I think that's it. Come on, you get out of there. Come on. And it fell in lava too. Now this is something else that I don't need for absolutely anything, so I can just discard it. Now I have the oil pump here. Then I have this little, like, wedge part on this nut so you have to use a flathead screwdriver and just tap that straight again so you can remove that nut it's probably a lot easier on an engine stand and having the motor just floating right Nope, stop falling on the lava. Okay. You pull all this stuff out at the same time. I kind of want to keep it on order. And there's this other counterweight that I need to use as well. Oh my God, bro. Along with a needle bearing. So I got the needle bearing right here. That one fell apart on my rotary engine on the S5. Then I have this spacer here. So just gonna kinda keep it just like that and put it back together again. So now the shop is pretty much loose. Uh, I'm gonna take the oil pump off to just show you how to come off. This, just these four little bolts right here. And this is also another part that I will not be using on the other motor. So I'll just throw it away. This is what the inside looks like. So this thing just spins. So it draws oil from one side and it compresses it and pushes out the other side of the pump. And that's how it pumps the oil. Very simple. So it has a rotor pump inside a rotary engine. Talk about that. Now we move on to the back of the engine. We have 
all the studs that hold the plates together. Then we have the stationary gear, which I'm also gonna be removing, and then everything should just start falling off. The stationary gear, this has, oh, wait, 12, not 15. Mess that one up, quick change. All right, here we go. There's six bolts. Oh. Now somehow this thing should come off. Well, the stationary gear is staying there. So I'm just gonna remove the big old studs off, or well, in this case, bolts. I just call them studs because they're really long. I don't care what order I'm taking them off because I'm not gonna reuse this place anyway. So I just want to take it apart so I can take the guts of this engine. Feels weird not doing things the right way. Now we use a little quickie tool. Before I almost messed up, there's an additional two studs here and here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. All right, now we should be able to pop this thing off. This iron definitely I don't need so I can set this apart. Then now I can remove this rotor. Now I need to remove the dowel pins. Just gently grasp and pull. Now we should be able to knock this guy out too. It's one housing. Now let's see if I can get this right. I need to try to get the eccentric shaft off. So let's see how we do this. 
I just pull it with the center light real quick. Get around with it. Oh, come on, rotor, stay there. Aha. Now, gently try to make this come off from here somehow. Aha! At this point, I can literally just grab this guy right here and just pull him out. I have the rotor parts here, so I have one rotor, this is the front one, the rear one still on the table. Then I have the eccentric shaft right here, rear counterweight, the rear keyway, front keyway, and there's one of the needle bearings already here, then the other part is here that I'll put it all together, it's kind of like hold it as one unit. And then Marco was here earlier and he was like, oh there's just these little tiny seals, because it's like... Is this what holds your compression? Like, yeah, but then next minute, they got all the seals that came out of these rotors. So I cleaned them all up before sending them over to Mike. So then I'll just probably like, I don't know if I should like break clean this or just like leave it so it doesn't rust and chipping. And I'll deal, I'll probably leave them deal with that over there. All right, guys, finally finished the 13B disassembly. It's like 7:30 now. Just left everything here. I took all the oil off the rotor so it wouldn't stink like it did before. I left the extender shaft kind of like moist a little bit so it's not it doesn't rust or anything. And the charge of what my plans with this thing are. I'm still gonna send Mike the stationary gears just in case he needs them. Then I also save all the corner seals in this little bag right here. One way to not lose everything is just leave everything assembled. That way you can't lose anything. Well, so that's all I have for today. I'm gonna get out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was my first time taking a rotor engine by myself. So it was my first rotor engine since the other one was done by Mike, which is an expert hand. So now I'm just gonna send all these components to him so we can build a really sick 13B.